I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I 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 need it! I Everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake of the One Man Band is back again, and welcome to probably the first, official first, Ruby Volume 3 episode breakdown. Now it isn't an actual episode, it is a World of Remnant video, but I say it counts because it still contributes to the actual series. Now, yes, I was so happy when I saw that this video was up there, so... I got a page full of notes. Let's get right into it, shall we? Alrighty, this World of Remnant episode describes how the Vital Festival came into fruition and how it was established. Now, something I instantly caught on, it wasn't voiced over by Jen Taylor, who did the intro to Ruby in Volume 1 and the World of Remnant videos in Volume 2. Instead, it is voiced by Ozpin. It's voiced by Shannon McCormick, uh, Ozpin's voice actor. Now, this could mean one of two things. One, probably the most likely, they probably couldn't get Jen Taylor to voice this, and for some reason they wanted Ozpin to do it instead. Or, could it possibly mean that Jen Taylor herself is actually going to get a voice acting role in Ruby? I mean, it's a possibility. I don't know if that can actually happen, but I think it could. I mean, I think that'd be pretty freaking cool. And so, the very first line in this World of Remnant video is, It began with war. Now, this isn't the first time that we've heard about war in Ruby so far, but it describes how there was war between the four big kingdoms of Remnant. Now, is this the same war that Ozpin talked about 80 years ago, or is it a war that's even more ancient than that? We're not entirely sure, but it probably very likely is the same war, the Color Wars, as many people have taken to calling it, that took place 80 years prior to the Ruby present of right now. And not only is war brought up again in the series, but it starts off, it's pretty much starting off Volume 3. So does this mean that Volume 3 is gonna be the volume that starts to take Ruby down a darker road? It quite possibly can be, and I'm going to talk more about that later on in the video. Yet, it states, As we know, war is a constant, but what also is a constant? Peace. Peace also happens after war, and the Four Kingdoms were able to find that peace on Vital Island. Now, was it named Vital Island before the war? Or did they name it Vital Island because it was such a vital piece of history that they ended the war. <laughs> it's a terrible joke, I'm sorry. But it is on this island that the Four Kingdoms representatives decided that they would uh, bring into fruition new laws, new academies, and new traditions. This, of course, would give birth to the Vital Festival, which is going to be the main plot point setting of Volume 3. Now, the Vital Festival is a festival that takes place every two years. So if you really think about it, it's a lot like the Olympics in the real world, how there's the Winter Olympics and then the Summer Olympics. So every two years, the kingdoms would come together in a cultural festival that would help promote peace between kingdoms and to help people remember the peace that was brought between the kingdoms on that fateful day on Vital Island. 
And since this piece was brought into fruition because of a war, what better way to celebrate peace than with a good old fashioned tournament where people beat the ever living crap out of each other. Now it's also stated here that the tournament is where the students of the newly formed academies would engage in friendly gladiatorial combat. Now, I believe this means that the big huntsman schools were not established until after the Great War ended. And it wasn't until then that the huntsmen were established. So this could very well mean that Ozpin, if he is older than we believe he is, and a lot of people think that he is really, really old, Montioli even said he was really, really old, this could mean that Ozpin has been the only headmaster of Beacon Academy and the leader of the Huntsman in general. But I'm getting off topic. Now, the Tournament of the Vital Festival was meant to promote friendly competition between the kingdoms. Therefore, the kingdom's Huntsmen would always be at the best of their game and they would never lack in training or dedication. That way, they would always be strong to fight against the creatures of Grimm. That's what I believe. And with the creation of the Huntsman Academies after the war, really makes me think that the Huntsmen are along the lines of the Jedi from Star Wars. They're not so much as to be a military force, they're meant more to be peacekeepers and ambassadors, kind of like the the grand arbiters of the world, if you believe. And the Huntsmen are meant to be that force that fights just whatever is being a threat to humanity as a whole. It's not supposed to get involved, I believe, in nation squabbles and politics. It's meant to be a force that takes on the evils of the world, like the creatures of Grimm. Now, it was through the combined efforts of all of the four big kingdoms that the Grand Colosseum that was to house the vital tournament was created, Amenity Colosseum. Now, it's stated in the video that this Colosseum had the ability to transport itself to wherever it needed to go to whatever country was hosting the games and the festival that year. So that means this Colosseum can freaking fly. It can fly. That's crazy. Now here's something else to think about. When it's showing off how there's all the champions and the warriors fighting each other in the vinyl festival, there is one champion warrior, huntsman, if you will, in particular, that they're represented by the color green, representing the kingdom of Vale, and they have a red scarf flowing, and they're the only other champion who has a form of, a distinctive form of clothing on them. Does, is, was this maybe an ancestor of Ruby of somehow? Is it Summer Rose, maybe? I mean, we know Summer Rose wore a white cape, but that doesn't mean she maybe wore a red scarf at some point. It's it's just something to think about. So I want you guys to tell me what you think down below. Now, before I sign off, I want to talk about one last thing. The end quote. Ozpin states that he wishes that we would never stray from that path, meaning the path of peace due to the fact of what he was talking about before, how even though this grand vital festival was born out of war, it is upkept through peace, and he wishes us to never diverge from that path. Now, it may just be that that's the ending quote, but we're gonna divulge from that path. I really believe that that's what's going to be happening in volume three now. I think war is coming. War is coming. Winter is not. Winter is coming, but so is war. Now, what does this mean for our heroines, Team Ruby? Are they gonna have to end up fighting friends of theirs that they've made at the Vital Festival once they retreat back to their appropriate kingdoms? Is Cinder the mastermind behind all this? And what's her end game? I mean, if what they really want to do is diverge the kingdoms and create war, then why? Why would they do such a thing? I'm not sure, but only time will tell. And well, we still have until the 24th 
for the first episode of Volume 3 to come out to think about it. So be sure to leave all your comments, thoughts, theories, and anything that I've missed down in the comments below. I would love to read them, especially now that episodes are coming out and I don't have to make up all this stuff off the top of my head every single video. So be sure to like and favorite if you've enjoyed, subscribe of course if you feel inclined to. And check out some other videos that I've done, I do a lot of them to entertain you guys. And until then, this has been Jake of the One Man Band, be a good person, tip your waitresses, keep moving forward, the Vital Festival is coming, and I hope to see you there. I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah.